I'm Herb Suds, and I'm very happy to say on this show I have singer, songwriter, Broadway actor, television actor. Um, did I leave anything out? Singer. Singer. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Morris, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. You know, there are some entertainers whose talents transcend musical barriers and categories to garner them respect in a variety of artistic arenas. You fit all those categories. You did everything. I've almost. I've tried a lot of things. Yeah. Let's talk about your new LP. Okay. Uh, Full Moon, Empty Heart. What can we find on this album? Uh, it's. Uh, you can find ten great songs. I think um, the the album is is a little bit. It, it reminds me of two of my past albums. An album called Plain Brown Rapper and another album called Why Lady Why which Flame Brown Rapper was all acoustic and real kind of um, raw, and Wild and Y had big commercial hits on it, uh, Velvet Chains, Love She Found Me, Wind Beneath My Wings, so forth. And, and I think there's a little bit of both of those two albums in, in this particular offering. Is there any, why, any reason why you can try to combine the two, or is it just that it had to happen mm, that way? I, well, I wanted to, I, I've been, I've had some songs for a while that I thought were really, really great songs. Um, that I, I was kind of saving, and uh, at the same time, I have had some songs that were, I don't think they'll ever be hits. They're, they're pieces of business that songs I particularly like. Mm -hmm. So I combined, uh, combined both of them. I combined some of the things that I just really like to sing, and then some of what I think are great songs. And, and so I produced the album, so I made it kind of open and uh, breathes a little bit, which I like, and uh, so that's the combination. There's a uh, different words of description for some of the songs, such as Texas Bound, is what's infectious rhythm sound mean? Well, uh, <laughs> it's got a groove to it, and sometimes you're not allowed grooves in country music, but it, it, it really has a, uh, it's little feetish when a rock and roll band, it has mm -hmm. that kind of backbeat groove to it, and um, it makes you want to dance. How about soaring? Another word of description. Uh, maybe one fall, you're talking about that? There you go. No, one fall exactly. takes. It, it's just, uh, it remi that song reminds me a bit of a song I had called Leave Me Lonely in terms of the way it feels and it just, but it just kind of takes off. It's a real, real nice tune. What's the upper register when it says where well, love is concerned? concerned. <laughs> that means it's really high. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's got a couple of high notes in it. Beautiful song. Gary Burr, who's from Connecticut, wrote it and I uh, uh, really love the song. The uh, one that grabbed my interest was uh, Moose Chin Stew. A little funky? <laughs> <laughs> Moose Chin Stew uh, is a story song, and uh, I, I wrote it with a girl named Victoria Shaw, who's from New York City, and, and she's turning out to be an incredible writer. She's got Garth Brooks's next single, and uh, I like the song. It's a story. It's about, it's about women. Not a bad idea to write no. about. <laughs> <laughs> they might not like what I say about them, but that's uh -oh. what it's about. <laughs> uh -oh. You have a video on one fall is all it takes. Right. right. It's I, haven't, brand new. I haven't received it yet, but well, uh, you should be getting get it. it. Yeah, you should be getting it right away. It's self-produced. Yeah. What, uh, what's in that video? What, how did you? Uh, what you it's to see? the well, one fall. I mean, the the season fall is what mm -hmm. it's about. Oh, the video, and so, but it's a it's a love song, and uh, so it's a love video too. This LP returns you back to the big soulful vocals that you had that. Made you into a mega star, right? as they say. <laughs> mega, a yeah. Mega star. Well, there are some of those big, uh, big melodic songs on it. Uh, Where love is concerned, the mm -hmm. man upstairs is a great song, and it's a, it's a real good song for me to sing. What's what's offbeat lyrically surprising for man upstairs? Well, if I told you what was surprising okay. about it, then uh, it's a it's not your normal song. Okay. It's about a guy who. Storylines about a guy who gets out of college and finds a world, and he meets a, an old man. Uh, the, the the moral, if there's a moral, is uh, not to judge people by your first impression. Do you showcase your brilliant vocals more in this album than your past albums? <laughs> brilliant vocals. Uh, I picked these words up in different articles. <laughs> I read about you. Yeah, I, I need to start writing my own articles. Uh, uh, I, I sing on this. Uh, it is an album of me singing, and uh, some of the, some of the songs really let me do th what I do best, which is sing. So, uh, tell us about singing for the Queen of England. How'd that come about? Um, people, to the best of my knowledge, the the inquiry inquiry about me performing came from the Queen's people from okay. from uh, from England before she arrived, and uh, I played it. I played for her in Texas. It was her first time to go to Texas, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it was a nice evening. She wanted to meet you, huh? Yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's not single, is she? <laughs> yeah. 
No, I don't believe she is. You've been invited to the White House a few times to entertain for presidents also. Yeah, I played for, uh, I played for, for Carter during yeah. his administration, and I played at Christmas in Washington for Reagan, and I played three or four times for Bush. Wow. Very good. And you went to the Soviet Union. You were the BMI Goodwill Ambassador. Yeah, uh, that means I work for the Goodwill, <laughs> and uh, BMI paid for the ticket. <laughs> yeah, it was great fun. I was in Moscow. How, for them. how was how's country music doing over there? How was in the Soviet Union? It's uh, right right in the like Moscow. It's not very big yet. What they think of country music is really uh, dated 30, 40 years. And the rest of Europe, even in the other communist mm -hmm. countries, there um, or the old communist countries, uh, country music is moving ahead really nicely. Because I know you, you made a 10-day trip over to the Eastern European. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, to Czechoslovakia. And right, and uh, they knew some of my music, which was interesting. Czechoslovakia and Hungary and Estonia. In fact, you produced a, a rock album for Hungarian rock group. Rock and How roll. How did that come about? Well, uh, the lead singer from that band happened to play uh, Jean Valjean, which is the lead in Les Miserables in Budapest in, uh, in Hungary. So. Uh, somehow they got, we got connected between them and us about me having done Valjean and these people knew I did uh, produce some records and thus the the meeting and we agreed to agree and I cut the album off. Uh, in Nashville? In Nashville. And how's it doing? <clears throat> I think it went gold uh, about three or four weeks out. Over there? Mm -hmm. They sang the songs in their native tongue? Uh huh. When they did, uh, I wrote wrote one song for the project, uh, which I sang in English and they sang in Hungarian. Oh, was an interesting combination. On. Tell us about your success with your single and the star-studded video called "Miles Across the Bedroom." Well, "Miles Across the Bedroom" was off the These Days album, and uh, it was the first video I've had in five years. So. Uh, I wanted to bring a few of my friends in and make it fun, so I call up a bunch of people, uh, Eddie Rabbit, and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the, a, a nice list of people, and they all said, yeah, sure, we go do it. We had a great time doing it. It was a, it was a fun video. It all started back in Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah, I read thank it Mom and Dad for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were musically inclined, huh? Uh, well, yeah, I think it's a kind of musical family, although not professionally speaking, but yeah. Musical. They were always country music? Yeah, always in my house. My dad played country music records. Mom hated country music. Dad loved it. Mom played religious records and big band records, and Dad played everybody named Hank. So that's kind of how I grew up. Who were your idols back then? Didn't have very many. My my eyes were Johnny Unitas and uh, uh, I was I guess a music player. or sports. That yeah, was sports, it. Sports, yeah. yeah. You were quite an athlete when you were. I can barely remember those years. Uh, it's been a day or two, <laughs> huh? You, uh, which was your favorite sport? You've lettered in four of them. Um, God, I don't really don't know. What did you excel in the most? Um, um, wow, I'm, I'm, I made all conference in all of them. So, um, you were going to play for Texas Tech and one. Yeah, football. Okay. Uh, and I ended up getting a baseball scholarship, and I think my favorite to play is basketball. <laughs> <laughs> you always had a band while you were going through school? Uh, I, yeah, I, I, well, not really. I, I played music, but um, but not with a band, not until I was in high school. I, I, I got a, I sang with a band, but I grew up Southern Baptist, and um, and they the band wanted to play where they were serving alcohol, and so mm -hmm. I didn't go. And. Uh, uh, so I didn't really, really think I had a future in this business, and uh, somehow here I am. Until you vacationed in Colorado. Right. I went up there, <laughs> uh, changed my views a bit. I was going to chase girls and drink beer. Okay. You changed your <laughs> I'd views left home. quite a bit. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I started playing music at a club and, and uh, never quit. You wound up on the Ted Max Amateur Hour, too, huh? Yeah. A lot of Ted Mac, and uh, I lost to an opera singer, which should have been probably a vision of things to come for me, I guess. About that. What was your first recording contract? When did that come about? 1981. Uh, you debuted with Sweet Red Wine? Mm hmm. Sweet Red Wine and then Fire, Fire in Your, your eyes. eyes. Heading for a Heartache, okay. Top Ten, and, and then Don't Look Back. Top Ten. Uh, it's don't th Look Back was a Top Ten or did it make one? Uh, it was Top Ten. My top first number one record was Baby Bye Bye. I'm surprised because Wind Beneath My Wings wasn't. Didn't make one, huh? Wasn't a one. The yeah. Love She Found in Me wasn't a one. Velvet Chains wasn't a one. They all should have been, but they weren't. The wind Beneath My Wings, would that sort of uh, launch your career? Oh. Yeah, uh, Velvet Change was a record that really kind of got me, uh, well, Headed for Heartache was the one that gave me access to radio, and Velvet Change was kind of uh, the beginning of the Why Lady Why 
era and then Wind Beneath My Wings won Song of the Year, so uh, that was a pretty good time. Who else recorded your songs have you written? Uh, yeah, Reba McIntyre has recorded uh, uh, John Schneider when he was back yeah. recording. That's about it, really. Well, and Bette Midler kind of. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bette, Wind Beneath My Wings. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, she made a nice record on that. In 1984, you were, it was vote of song of the year and mm -hmm. by ACM and CMA, and uh, I'm surprised it didn't go number one. How about 100% Chance of Rain? That was the number one? Number one. Somebody Lives There. Ah, well, that's another one of my favorite songs. I wrote it uh, and, and gave the money to Habitat for Humanity. Yes. It's a real powerful song about homelessness, at least in general or in principle, and in the greater scope, it's more about humanity and one, one world, one people. Didn't you do a uh, host a show for, over in Europe for that? Mm, yeah, I yeah. did. How about how'd that go over there? It went over great. I did it in Russia. I did the song and uh, yeah, and uh, in Moscow on television. It was a big hit. I, I just read that in the magazine. I was coming over. You know, mm -hmm. I, thinking, I know that. And you wrote what other songs? And these that these days album was the mm -hmm. uh, somebody. Lives somebody was a, You wrote about homelessness and environment, and you took some. Uh, yeah, I took a few chances. Uh, how did it fly? Uh, chances don't fly very well in country music. Uh, no. They, they kind of flew, but kind of like off a cliff and straight down. Uh, <laughs> so. You were a Broadway TV appearances and movie soundtracks. Tell us about your Broadway experience. Well, of course, I did Les Miserables for right. six months on Broadway. And How was it to be on Broadway? It was great. Big, big, a thrill to be. Well, I tell you, it's just as thrilling for me to go on stage here tonight. Is it? Yeah, I'm, I like, because tonight I'm doing my own music. Okay. I mean, I'm not trying to diminish no. the, the, the doing Broadway, but I never lived and dreamed to be a Broadway performer, so it was, it was nice and it was real thrilling, but it wasn't, you know, a goal of my life. So how, just, how did the part come about? Uh, I auditioned for it. I auditioned because uh, I, I thought I wanted to do something in New York again, and... Um, they gave it to me. <laughs> How many people did you have to uh, compete against? The world, I think. Okay. I don't know. I really don't know. And what else did you do in, with Linda Ronstadt? I did Lava Wim with Linda Ronstadt for Joseph Papp, who just died, which yeah. is a real sad moment for yeah. me. That was public theater in New York, and um, that was, uh, I auditioned for that too. There were about 400 pop singers, not opera singers, auditioned for that role. You're good in opera? That's what Lava Wim was. That was, that yeah. was mm -hmm. I guess they figured so. <laughs> How about the uh, Colby's Another World and Mike Hammer? Some, some I just television. I did Colby's for a season, played a blind singer. And uh, Another World, I just made a guest appearance. Mike Hammer, I was, you know, a guest star on the show. And, uh, they're, they're fun to do occasionally. How about movie soundtracks? Been quite a few of those. Yeah. Uh, Russell's Rhapsody, the song uh, Lasso the Moon, which is right. a big record, came from that. Uh, I can't even remember the rest of them. You do what with Jennifer Warren? Right, I did that. That was from uh, Bruce Willis movie. <laughs> Escapes me now. Yeah. I think it was called yeah. One Eye. Blind Date. Blind Date. Blind date. Yeah, yeah, Blind Date. I tell you, what, what's, what's left for you to do, Gary? Uh, platinum album. You haven't received a platinum yet? Nope. Gold? Now, can you arrange gold? that? I got a gold oh. coming. Do you? Yeah. I need a, I need a platinum album. If you can arrange well, that. Well, let's see. Maybe we can work see, on you've it. got like uh, four million viewers. Yeah. If every one of them would go out and buy Talk to one the camera. record, make a great gift. Okay. Make a great gift. Hey, actually, we'll play well in your own home. <laughs> and uh, But you'll find that if you go out, if four million people went out and tried to buy one of my records, only about 30,000 could get them because that's how many is out right now. So, but four million people went out and asked. Yes. And all of a sudden, there'd be a lot of records out there. So that's well, kind of why I'm doing it. Well, let's hope so. Let's hope the people who watch the show go out and buy Gary Morris records. What, what are your hobbies? What do you do when you're just hanging around at home? I'm, uh, I hunt. Do you? I fish. I play spades, which we're going to finish our game here shortly. Moon, moon chins, <laughs> moon chins too. Moon chins too, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that yeah. sort of way. Of, yeah. That kind of uh, talks about some of your hobbies, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it does. Outdoor, you're an outdoor yeah. person? I'm an outdoor person, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Thank you for being on the show, sir. Thank you, thank you. Buy some Gary Morris records. This is Herb Sutton. Until next time, keep smiling, keep it Sutton country.